Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Canada. I hope everybody is having a great weekend so far. Students, right now we are doing an IELTS speaking part two class focusing on that perfect band nine score. And the topic of this cue card, because part two is a little card that you see, or you're, you're going to see a booklet with about five, six questions on it. And today's uh, topic will be an object from a vacation. So again, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS training. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we've got lots and lots of information to help you improve your English and your communication. Our academic IELTS website looks like this. You can click this big red button that's just above my head there uh, to join our uh, premium uh, IELTS package. It's a one-time payment uh, for lifetime access, so um, it doesn't cost a lot and uh, you can use it as much as you need to pass your IELTS exam. Use this discount code ULTIMATE9 uh, for an additional 25% uh, discount that you're going to see uh, right there in the price at the top. On the left. All right. Uh, for general IELTS, uh, same idea. It's the green background um, at gieltshelp.com. And again, click this uh, red button just above my head there uh, to join our premium IELTS package. Yeah, use this code, ULTIMATE9. That's coming from one of our latest uh, IELTS speaking videos. By the way, everyone, we did just release about an hour ago a new IELTS speaking video that's really cool. Um, it's uh, where you can do an IELTS uh, speaking simulation. It's like a karaoke. You can um, use the subtitles. I mean, if you want, you can sing, but I don't recommend it for the IELTS. Uh, but definitely, um, jokes aside, use the subtitles so that you can get a feeling for the level of English and the fluency of English that is required for that band nine um, in the IELTS uh, exam. All right, welcome, Amu. Hi, uh, Kiao. Uh, good to have you on board. Nice to have members joining in. Everyone, this is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. If you'd like to join the chat in this class, you need to become a member of our channel. There are four different options for that. Uh, we will have an all chat class coming up in about 90 minutes. Um, that uh, will be speaking part three. Welcome, Anish. Good to see you. Um, students, we have apps uh, in your Apple or Google Play stores. Uh, you can download the app Academic IELTS Help uh, or General IELTS Help. Uh, those apps uh, also power our website, so they connect, they link. Uh, you can check us out on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE Help for Academic IELTS and G IELTS Help. Uh, we keep the academic and general IELTS materials separate. They should be kept separate, it makes sense. So make sure you pay attention to which module you're doing. Um, speaking is the same for both academic and general, so this class works for both. Uh, if you uh, have questions, you can always send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. That's my name, um, the email's right up there. So you can send me an email. Um, students, uh, again, we don't have classes right now on Wednesdays. Uh, we're trying out this kind of new system. We have longer classes Thursdays uh, to Saturdays. And we're bringing you more HD videos like that new speaking video, that IELTS simulation video. I highly recommend checking out that video. It's really cool. Um, we think that it's a very powerful way to uh, practice your speaking especially when you don't have a speaking partner. Um, so again, uh, this will be our schedule 
for the next week uh, from today until the 30th. Um, today we have speaking part two uh, with some questions and answers uh, from our members. So members, today you'll have a chance to ask me some questions too. I'm kind of just combining the Q&A session with the speaking part two class. And then uh, we'll have speaking part three as well uh, a little bit later in, um, in about two hours. Okay, and then next week, uh, Thursday the 28th, speaking part one, and then we'll have reading, listening, and speaking classes in the week. Uh, let's take a look at today's IELTS a speaking part two cue card, okay? So uh, here we go with uh, today's IELTS speaking part two, okay. It's, um, it's kind of the scarier part of the IELTS um, speaking section for a lot of students. Um, why is that, members? Why do you think um, a lot of uh, candidates are a little bit worried about IELTS speaking part two? What's the reason for that? And uh, while you're giving me some answers in the chat, um, that's kind of what you can see beside me here, students, is the chat. Let me show you what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at this here. Um, this is the, um, uh, the chat. And uh, I'm constantly looking at what our members are saying and, um, and commenting. So um, yeah, uh, definitely answer my questions. Welcome, Rashika. Hi, Amu. Um, yeah, so people are nervous during speaking part two, but the question here, of course, again, is why? So why are, why are they nervous? Why do people get really nervous uh, for speaking part two? What's the reason for that? Uh, Ken says it's hard to guess what question will come up. It's basically impossible, Ken. You cannot guess, okay? So you cannot guess uh, what the question will be. Um, that's kind of like trying to play the lottery. It's one in a 10 million that uh, you're going to be able to guess uh, what the question will be. So don't even try, okay? Okay, Amu, very good. So Amu says it's maybe a lack of knowledge on the topic or lack of technique. Yeah, so um, lack of practice, so lack of ability uh, to uh, give a presentation on a random uh, topic in English uh, for two minutes, okay? This is even challenging in a person's uh, native language. So uh, there's two important points here, everyone. Uh, point number one is you have to uh, have technique, okay? So there are two important points to keep in mind, okay? Number one is you have to practice part two, even if you have good English. before the exam, even if you have good English, okay? And number two, you have to know it's the strategy. You have to have clear strategy, okay? And we're going to practice that today. So um, you're doing both. You're practicing and you are applying strategy, okay? All right. So this is the cue card. So the way this works is you go to your IELTS speaking and you answer some questions uh, on a general topic like talking about hobbies or sports or books. Um, the examiner will ask you questions like what is your favorite book? How often do you read books? When is the last time you read a book? What was the book? What was the story in the book? So they'll ask you a few questions like this and then uh, they will say okay that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For part two, I will show you some questions. Please do not touch the booklet. 
you will have one minute to read these questions, think about your answers, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. And then they show you the, the questions and they'll read the topic of the question and then they'll start your one minute preparation time. So they'll say something like, talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation. Your one minute preparation time begins now. And then you have one minute uh, to prepare, okay? And this is where strategy becomes super important. So you have to realize that, okay, I have to do step one, step two, step three, quickly, effectively in the one minute, just like I practiced at home, and then I will do a great job in part two, and I will also do a great job in part three, because part three is going to be connected uh, to part two. Hi, Cass, hi, Pooja, good to see more people joining in. So um, the first step that you're going to take is you're going to read the question twice, okay? It's to make sure that you're 100% clear on all of the questions. The only way to get full marks for part two is to answer all the questions on the card. If you don't, um, then you cannot get um, full marks. So you have to answer all of the questions. So you have, really have to pay attention to the questions on the card, okay? So this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat everyone, okay? So speak and repeat. Copy what I say, copy how I say it, okay? Copy the intonation. All right, um, so talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation. Again, talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation. What is this object? When and where did you get it? Where do you keep it in your house and why? Uh, what memories and feelings uh, does this object bring back from uh, your vacation okay so again uh, what is this object when and where did you get it where do you keep it in your house and why what memories and feelings does this object bring back from your vacation so that's your step one you now know you're talking about an object you got on a vacation and you're answering these questions and then step two is you identify the category and the tense of the discussion or the presentation because this is really not a discussion it's a presentation you're simply giving a two-minute presentation so in this case um what's the category what are we what are we looking at here and there's basically five categories okay so Keep this in mind, and each one has a unique kind of way to talk about it uh, in a clear, structured way. So five uh, categories, okay? Uh, you might talk about a person, you might talk about a place, an object, an event, or an idea, okay? And each of these has kind of a unique way to uh, clearly talk about it. And Cass says, in this case, we're talking about an object. Thank you for passing by, Cass, and helping us out. Uh, Rashika says we're talking about an object and we're talking about it in the past tense. Yeah. So here we're talking about an object uh, in the past tense. Yeah, because it's an object that we got during a vacation, right? And when we talk about an object, there are certain steps, there are certain points that we have to focus on in order to um, get full marks, in order to speak clearly um, and in a structured way to the listener, right? So um, when you talk about an object, you want to discuss its appearance, okay? What does this object look like? Okay, let me picture it. It's physical, it's an object, I can touch it. Like if I'm talking about my uh, coffee mug, 
got water in it. Um, it's a white mug uh, with the handle. It's cylindrical in shape. It's got our company IELTS uh, logo on it uh, that's off center. Um, it contains approximately 300 milliliters of liquid, in this case water. So um, it's ceramic, okay, the material. Uh, so I basically discuss what it looks like so that you can picture it without me holding it in front of the camera, of course, right? Because it's very unlikely that you'll have that object with you at your IELTS exam. Okay, so you describe its appearance so your listener can see it. And then after you describe its appearance or kind of simultaneously, you can describe its origin. So where does it come from? Um, where did you get it? Who gave it to you? Where did you buy it? Um, what's its origin, right? Uh, this coffee mug uh, was uh, ordered online. Um, there's a company, I forget the name of it, that uh, creates uh, merchandise for uh, YouTube channels and we use that to manufacture this coffee mug and purchased it for about five dollars and if you like it you can buy the same off of our website okay all right so um, its appearance um, the uh, origin its function so uh, how do you use it what do you do with it so um, this coffee mug I fill it with uh, cold or warm liquid. Um, I uh, use the handle to hold it, uh, usually in my uh, right hand, and then I drink from the rim of the cup. Okay, so that is the function, so how I use this uh, coffee cup, okay? And then uh, its importance, right? So uh, why is it important uh, for me? Uh, so this coffee mug uh, is important because it's a representation of our company. Uh, we use it for advertising during our lessons. People can see that we are discussing IELTS topics by seeing the logo every time I take a sip of water. And of course it helps me to stay hydrated and um, it uh, allows me to speak clearly because I avoid having a dry mouth from all the talking that I'm doing in these live classes. So uh, what is the importance of this object to me? Okay, so this is talking about an object. Now, of course, this coffee mug, I talked about it in the present tense, but with an object from a vacation, you're going to be talking about it in the past tense, right? So in the past, because it's something that you got. Um, so mostly in the past tense, right? So past, past continuous, past perfect, right? So appearance, origin, function, uh, importance. Talk about those points and you're definitely on your way to a nice high band score, okay? In that order. So appearance, firstly, uh, number one, right? Because then we know what it is, what it looks like. Uh, origin, uh, where it comes from. Number two, how long you had it, basically. Uh, three, function, the way that you use it, even though that might seem kind of intrinsic, it's like, well, everybody knows how to use a coffee mug, <laughs> um, but you never know, right? Like I actually use this coffee mug uh, to uh, water the plants in my office as well. So I fill it with uh, tap water when I'm not drinking filtered water during the lessons and I every once every week or so I pour some uh, water on the Diefenbachia plants that are uh, in my office. So it's function, right? And then it's importance. So objects carry certain kinds of value to the user and when you talk about that, um, then uh, that becomes unique for the listener. They realize, oh, okay, that's unique for this person, right? And then past tense. So when we talk about past tense, we want to focus on uh, using um, past perfect or past simple, uh, past progressive, uh, past perfect, present perfect, because we use present for perfect to talk about um, the past. So all of those uh, different tenses, okay? So you want to use all of those, all right? 
Okay, um, so you've realized that, all right, here I'm talking about an object. Um, I need to include these elements and this is all you can do. So like I say, you can't guess uh, your exact questions on the IELTS exam. That's not possible. So don't even try. Uh, it won't work. Just focus on uh, understanding how to talk about people, places, objects, events, ideas. Then when you get one of these, because it will be one of these, uh, then you will know exactly how to talk about it and it'll be very effective. Okay, welcome Amrit. Okay, um, so in the next step, in step three, step three is a really important one. What is it, members? So a lot of you are in this class regularly. Uh, what do we do in step three? So step three is a very, very important step uh, to success in speaking part two of the IELTS exam. Uh, what is it? So what is step three? Okay, and Pooja kind of has something to do with uh, what you said earlier is uh, one of the reasons part two is uh, so scary. Um, Cass says, construct your first sentence. I wouldn't do that yet, Cass. There's a very important step before you uh, construct your first sentence. So step one, you read the question a couple of times real quick. Uh, step two, you quickly thought about, okay, what this really is, right? Step one, two, and three happen very, very quickly. QR Lukeman, yeah, you have to be specific for, for uh, part two, for sure. And Anish, you're right, one of the reasons it's scary for people is because uh, they need to speak for two minutes um, continuously, so it's not just short answers. Yeah, so Rashika says, uh, think about two or three possible topics and pick the best one. Yeah, so think about two to three possible answers and pick the best one. Okay, um, so by best one, uh, we want to pick an answer that is original um, lots of content and easy to talk about. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say pick the best one. So you have to think of a couple of objects. So what are some objects that um, you would buy on a vacation? Now, of course, we will uh, choose kind of a, an imaginary object here just because uh, we will all work with the same example. So give me some thoughts on what could be some objects that we get at on a vacation. And tell me the vacation too, like where you got this uh, object from, okay? So object and then um, uh, the uh, the place where you got it from. Anish, I'm literally explaining what to do in the one minute preparation time. So these steps that I'm showing you right now, step one, two, three, four, five, you're gonna see four, five in a moment. Uh, this is what you need to do in the one minute. And I'll show you exactly about how much time or how many seconds you should spend on each one, okay? So um, maybe you got a keychain um with a picture of the uh, Burj Khalifa on your trip to Dubai okay for example all right so here you would just write down keychain okay Amu says a uh, seashell uh, let's say a conch okay uh, conch is, if you don't know what it is, it's that kind of beautiful, big uh, seashell. I think you even have a conch emoji that you can use. Um, a conch uh, from my uh, visit to uh, the, um, to let's say Costa Rica. Okay. Uh, so a place where you've got a lot of ocean, right? So maybe you got a conch from your visit to Costa Rica. There we go. Cass found the conch emoji. Um, nice, uh, Cass. Thank you for that. 
So if you look at Cass's comment there, uh, you can probably even see it when I bring it up here. You can see the little conch uh, emojis. That is a conch indeed. Some people call it a conch, but I believe the right pronunciation is a conch. Okay, and that's kind of a fun one. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, uh, a miniature statue of the Taj Mahal, says Anish. So a mini statue of the uh, Taj Mahal uh, on my visit to India. Sure. Why not? All right. So good. So you need to think of about three or four. Don't overdo it, right? Um, I would say maybe um, a uh, sun hat on my visit to Hawaii. Okay. All right. So all of these are kind of good. I think that uh, you know all of these could be uh, potentially a really good uh, choice, but you really have to, at the end of the day, just choose one. Um, so it could be a keychain uh, with a picture of the Burj Khalifa on your trip to Dubai, a conch uh, from your visit to uh, Costa Rica, or a, a mini statue of the Taj Mahal on your visit to India, or a sun hat um, uh, on your uh, visit to uh, Hawaii. Instead of a sun hat, let's make it a baseball hat. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, students, I think all of these uh, are good. Um, now, let's uh, let's just let's pick one. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to do a veto vote here. I'm going to go with a baseball hat on my visit to Hawaii. It's just, it's a, I think it's an easy one to talk about, okay? Um, and um, we can have lots of information on it, even if it's just made up. So uh, let's do a baseball hat on my visit to uh, Hawaii, okay. All right, so we've picked our, um, our best choice okay and then now we need to take some notes okay this is your step four okay and when you're taking notes um, just do it in the order of talking about this object so first it's appearance okay so what does this baseball hat look like okay um, maybe it's uh, white, one size fits all. Um, it's got uh, palm trees and sunset uh, picture with uh, the word Hawaii on it. Okay. All right. It's got a nice big visor. It's called a visor. Uh, that part of the um, baseball hat that's uh, at the front there uh, that's called a visor you'll see why that will become an important word here um, in a moment okay all right uh, so that is the appearance of the hat now it's origin okay so you don't need to write down the word appearance or origin uh, keep your notes as short as possible Okay, so that they're very useful. Um, Cass has now included the emoji for the baseball <laughs> hat or baseball cap. It's called also baseball cap as well, okay? All right, so it's origin. Um, obviously it comes from Hawaii. Uh, there are um, lots of islands that make up Hawaii, five of them, I believe. Uh, there is the island of Hawaii, but maybe you got it on Maui, okay? It's one of the other islands. Uh, so you got um, the uh, baseball cap uh, Maui, okay? Um, souvenir uh, shop uh, on the beach, okay? Uh, maybe you spent $20 on it. Okay, 
and maybe it wasn't you that bought it, but it was your sister that got it for you, okay? Um, so I'm just making this up, all right? Uh, again, the origin is important. Where does it come from, okay? All right, function. How do you use it? So how do you use a baseball cap, right? Um, and again, that might seem pointless, but it isn't, okay? So um, put it on my head. Um, and maybe sometimes you wear it backwards. Okay, or forwards. All right, um, and that's it, right? So there's not much to it, okay? Why is it important? Okay, protects me from the sun. Sure, protects from uh, the sun, absolutely. Um, now, protecting from the sun, that's something that you might remember without writing it into your notes. Um, but you might remember words like sunstroke or heat stroke. Okay, so um, if you get too much sun or if your head becomes too hot, you can get what's called sunstroke or heat stroke, and that's where you get really dizzy and then you pass out. Um, and maybe you remember that, oh yeah, it protects my eyes. Okay, all right, also you might remember that it reminds you of your vacation. Okay. And your sister, okay. Um, and Anish says for fashion, it actually looks good, okay. It's a nice uh, article of clothing to wear in the summer. Absolutely, Anish. Don't forget about the um, easy thoughts, right? Okay. And uh, yeah, it's a um, it's a discussion piece. So when you wear it, and people say, hey. I see your hat. Have you been to Hawaii? Then you can say, yeah, I went there a few years ago um, and had a lot of fun. So it's a conversation piece. Discussion piece, a better word is conversation piece. Okay. So ideally, when you practice, when you stay calm, when you're confident during your IELTS exam, you can come up with a lot of these notes very quickly. Okay. And you keep them simple. So you keep it really simple, all right? Okay, now step five is um, think of your first sentence. Okay, and answer the topic of the cue card directly. Okay, so no saying uh, there are a lot of objects that I got on vacations, but the one I want to talk about today is bop, bop, bop. Uh, no saying that kind of uh, sentence because that kind of a sentence is not good, okay? So don't do that, all right? Um, answer the question directly, all right? So look at the... Um, Look at the topic question. So talk about an object that reminds you of uh, a vacation and then answer that um, very clearly, okay? And if you can, paraphrase it. When you paraphrase that first sentence, that's a really great way uh, to start your response to get a high band score. So talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation, okay? Um, so here, I'll give you my first sentence. Give me a sentence using this baseball hat or baseball cap uh, from Maui, okay? Uh, so here we go. I'm going to give the first sentence. You give the first sentence, and then we'll compare, okay? So
All right. So there's my uh, first sentence. Okay. Yeah, so Anish, if you don't go on lots of vacations, um, then just make it up, okay? You cannot, so Anish is asking like, well, what if I'm one of those people that has never gone on a vacation, has never bought a souvenir? You have to make it up. That's the only answer there, okay? Um, it's hard to convince the examiner that you've never visited another city, another town, uh, and bought at least one little trinket or article of clothing or some kind of a souvenir. So, um, you have to make it up. You cannot say, I've never been on a vacation, I don't have any souvenirs. If you do that, you'll get a low mark. And you can't ask for a different question. So you can't say, oh, I've never been uh, on any vacations, can you ask me another question? They won't, they'll just say, no, that's the card. Um, and they'll, they might even say, make it up, <laughs> okay, if you say something like that. Um, so you have to be able to answer it. And if you don't have the experience, then just make it up. All right, Cass, um, so present perfect, not past perfect. Cass says the object that I'd always treasure was a baseball cap, um, which I was given to me by my sister in Maui, Hawaii, uh, last 2018. Uh, Cass, watch the grammar, a little bit simpler, okay, and present perfect, all right? Um, I have uh, a baseball cap. Uh, that was given to me by my sister in Maui, Hawaii in 2018, which helps me to remember that trip. Uh, Cass, again, remember, you have to use uh, the uh, main elements of the question. So here, it reminds you of a vacation. You have to include reminds me of uh, the vacation um, in your first sentence. Uh, Anish, if you're visiting Christian churches, then yeah, if you bought a religious item like uh, prayer beads or a uh, crucifix at one of those churches um, or maybe a card, a postcard uh, that helps you to remember or reminds you of that visit, then you can talk about that. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Ken says, well, the object that comes uh, to mind is my baseball cap my wife bought me at a souvenir shop in Maui, Hawaii during our summer vacation last year. Yeah, that works, Ken. Very good. And uh, even if it's not true because we had uh, COVID, <laughs> right? So people weren't traveling so much. Um, yeah, sure. It doesn't have to be the truth. Okay. All right, so now all you have to do is basically put together um, all of this preparation that you did. So this was Anisha's question, like what do I do in my one minute preparation time, right? So one minute uh, preparation time, one minute uh, preparation time, okay. Uh, basically, this is what you do, okay? So, and this is how you do it. And this is what I mean by stick uh, to strategy. So you have one minute to prepare. So step one, you read the question twice, nice and fast. Of course, not allowed. So talk about an object, reminds you of a vacation. Talk about an object, reminds me of a vacation. Okay, what is the object? What is it? When and where did you get it? When and where did I get it? Where do I keep it in my house? What memories and feelings does this object bring back? What does it bring back? Okay, all right, um, good. So read it twice. Now, it's an object. I need to uh, talk about its appearance, origin, function, um, and its importance. It's in, gonna be in the past tense, so past perfect. All right, so what kind of objects? Well, I've got a keychain uh, in the past. I've gotten um, socks. Um, I got an umbrella one time in New York. And oh yeah, I got my baseball cap in Hawaii. All right, I'm gonna go with the baseball cap. Now I'm gonna quickly write down some notes, appearance, what it looks like. So I write down my notes. Here are my notes. So I'm showing you this one minute, okay? And then my first sentence. Okay, um, so the object that helps to remind me of my vacation to Maui, Hawaii that I took uh, five years ago with my family is a baseball cap that my sister got me. All right, so I put it all together in that one minute time. Now, of course, when we're doing this in our head, this is happening nice and fast, 
Okay, when you practice this, it's happening nice and fast. Okay. Welcome to our group of members, Mad Lab. Quite the handle, the Mad Lab. All right, make sure to send me an email, Mad Lab, so I can hook you up with those uh, videos and practice exams, okay? All right. So once I have all of this, um, the examiner will say, okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. And then when you start speaking, you're basically just putting together in order, appearance, origin, function, importance, and then you look at the cue card and make sure that you're answering all of these questions on the cue card and not missing any of those questions. And you wanna do that in the first 90 seconds, okay? So using our notes here, uh, students, give me some sentences. So it's a white baseball cap, one size fits all. Um, it's got some palm trees and a picture of a sunset on the front with the words Hawaii. It's got a nice big visor, okay? So um, here we go. The examiner says, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. I've got a baseball cap on my trip to Maui, Hawaii five years ago and it definitely helps uh, me to remember all of the good times I had on that trip. Um, this is a one size uh, fits all uh, cap with an adjustable uh, Velcro uh, strap on the back. Uh, it is mostly white. Now notice this is present tense because I still have this baseball cap, right? So here we're using present tense. It is mostly uh, white with a uh, picture of um, the sun uh, setting over the ocean and uh, some palm trees uh, with the word uh, Hawaii on the front above the visor okay so I've just described what this baseball cap looks like it makes a lot of sense for this question to explain to uh, the examiner what this looks like okay so as I'm writing this and as I'm saying this students make sure you repeat after me if uh, you come across some new words like, uh, for example, Velcro or Velcro strap, make sure you write that down. Velcro is the... Uh, <laughs> I hope you got that from the sound effect that I just made, okay? So, <laughs> um, you find it on kids' shoes as well, um, backpacks. Velcro is great. I think the, the reason why we write it with a capital V is because the guy who invented it, and his name is Mr. Velcro. Uh, so, um, yeah, <laughs> Velcro strap, okay? So if you see new words, write it down while we're doing this speaking, okay? All right, Mad Lab, I see your question while you're uh, catching up with me and thinking about what to say. Uh, Mad Lab is asking, my current band score is 6.5 and my desired band score is 7.5 to 8. How can I improve my band score? My exam will be on the 28th of May. Mad Lab, my biggest tip, because you have about a month, one month. One month, um, focus on some vocabulary and grammar, but really focus on good, clear, accurate communication. So focus your studies on uh, speaking clearly and accurately and precisely. So just like what we're doing in this class, you'll see, um, is we're focusing on coming up with a very precise, clear answer uh, to this cue card. And that's how uh, you're able to achieve that band 7.5 to 8. Okay, um, Rashika says, I bought this cap in Maui, Hawaii after bargaining for a reasonable price of $20 at a souvenir shop on the beach. Okay, uh, remember my sister got it for me, Rashika. The reason I'm saying my sister got it for me is because it gives me more information to talk about of how it helps to remind me of uh, this trip. Okay, all right, Rashika. 
So, um, in fact, my uh, sister got it uh, for me um, while we were uh, strolling along uh, the beach uh, from a, a souvenir shop for around uh, $20. Twenty dollars, um, because I had been uh, complaining to her about um, the sun hurting my eyes. Okay, so I visualized myself walking down the beach with my sister. I don't actually have a sister; I have two brothers. But uh, we're just making this up, right? So. Um, and I'm like, oh, my eyes are hurting. <laughs> the sun is so strong. And then my sister, my imaginary sister, uh, says, oh, just a second. I'll, I'll get you something. And then she goes and uh, buys this uh, baseball cap. And here you go. And there's that'll protect you from the sun. OK, so um, now uh, whenever it is sunny out, I uh, wear this uh, cap to uh, protect my eyes and also uh, save me from heat or sunstroke. Uh, indeed, um, this was really useful for me uh, during our uh, two uh, week vacation as it was always uh, sunny and hot and we had spent uh, much time on the beach. So of course, uh, whenever I wear this cap um, it reminds me of all the fun times I had uh, playing games and relaxing uh, on the uh, white uh, sand in Maui with uh, my family Okay. All right. Uh, so remember the question always throughout your answer. The question is asking you, it reminds you of your vacation. So what are the memories of your vacation? I've never been to Maui either, by the way, uh, students. So, uh, you know, just in case some of you are thinking, well, maybe this is easy for Adrian because he's been to Maui. I haven't. I've never been to Maui. In fact, I don't even know if the sand is white in Maui. I'm just making that up. I have been to Kauai, but Kauai is quite different uh, from Maui. Um, but I have been to Kauai in 2014, so to be fair, right? But it could be any beach. Like um, if you're in India, you could be just thinking of Goa, right? Uh, if you've ever visited Goa, Anish, could be the same idea. You bought a baseball cap in Goa. Baseball caps are usually souvenirs found all over the place, right? So it's one that you could really um, adapt, okay? All right, um, so don't forget the importance, right? So we're already talking about the importance. Um, so this uh, cap is um, not only uh, special uh, for me because um, of uh, the memories that it brings back from beautiful Hawaii, but it also uh, reminds me of my sister's uh, love and care. Okay. All right. Kira Lookman's asking, can I say that she went and bought me this cap as I'm talking about something in the past? Um, yeah, you can say that. She went and bought me this cap. Absolutely. 
Yeah, you could say that. Okay, in the beginning. You're very welcome, Mad Lab. Okay, now uh, we're doing a good job here and um, we're definitely well into our one to two minutes of speaking. So we're at about 60 seconds. And at this time in your speaking, it's really important to check the cue card. Check the cue card, okay? Make sure that you answer all of the questions on the card in the first 90 seconds. Okay. Then if you have more time, you can expand. You can talk a bit more about it. All right. So if we go back to this cue card again, the cue card says, talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation. Okay. Uh, what is the object? When and where did you get it? Where do you keep it in your house and why? Okay, we haven't really talked too much about that. What memories and feelings does this object bring back from your vacation? We have talked about that, but we can maybe talk a bit more about that, especially the feelings, okay? Before we do that, let's talk about where we keep it in our house and why, okay? So, um... I keep my Hawaii uh, baseball cap uh, either in my closet uh, or on top of my uh, dresser. In this way, I always know uh, where it is. Uh, so I can just grab it while uh, rushing out of the house. And of course, um, it stays in good condition. All right. So now I've answered that question of where I keep it. And of course, I'm always thinking of reasons like why do I keep it there? I keep it there so I can just quickly grab it and I always know where it is. And so it stays nice and clean and doesn't lose its shape, right? I don't sit on it. So I don't put it on the chair, for example. Okay. All right. And then maybe a little bit more now about the memories and about the feelings. Okay. So, um, Often, when I wear this cap, I feel uh, really relaxed because um, I remember all of the calm and peaceful hours that I uh, had spent sitting uh, in a uh, sun chair wearing the cap and uh, looking out over the ocean uh, on the trip back in uh, 2016. Okay. All right. So uh, you might have more time. You might not. The examiner at this point might say, okay, your two minutes is up. Uh, I will now take back the questions and we will continue with part three. So here, uh, students, uh, let's take a look at this again um, and uh, we'll go through the key points and then you'll have a chance to practice, okay? So this is cue card part two, the long part in the IELTS. You have to prepare, you have to practice, even if you have good English, okay? Because it's a two minute surprise presentation on a topic that you are not expecting. So. Uh, talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation. What is this object? When and where did you get it? Where do you keep it in your house and why? What memories and feelings does this object bring back from your vacation? You will have one to two minutes to talk about this topic. You will have one minute to prepare. We did all our preparation. We decided to talk about a baseball hat or a baseball cap that we got on our visit to Hawaii. 
Okay, here we go, everybody. Make sure to speak and repeat, okay? So I got a baseball cap on my trip to Maui, Hawaii, five years ago, and it definitely helps me to remember all of the good times I had on that trip. This is a one-size-fits-all cap with an adjustable Velcro strap on the back. It's mostly white with a picture of the sun setting over the ocean and some palm trees with the word Hawaii on the front above the visor. In fact, my sister got it for me while we were strolling along the beach from a souvenir shop for around $20 because I had been complaining to her about the sun hurting my eyes. Now, whenever it is sunny out, I wear this cap to protect my eyes and also uh, save me from heat or sunstroke. Indeed, this was really useful for me during our two week vacation as it was uh, always sunny and hot and we had spent much time on the beach. So of course, whenever I wear this cap, it reminds me of all the fun times I had playing games and relaxing on the white sand in Maui with my family. This cap is not only special for me because of the memories that it brings back from beautiful Hawaii, but it also reminds me of my sister's love and care for me. I keep my Hawaii baseball cap either in my closet or on top of my dresser. In this way, I always know where it is so I can just grab it while rushing out of the house. And of course, it stays in good condition. Often when I wear this cap, I feel really relaxed because I remember all of the calm and peaceful hours that I had spent sitting in a sun chair wearing the cap looking out over the ocean on this trip back in 2016. Okay, QR Lukeman, thanks for that feedback. That's great, I'm really glad you're finding the strategy useful. Okay, make sure to practice it too, all right? Okay. All right, Rashika says, I keep it on my clothes because it is easy to find whenever I need it. Um, what do you mean on my clothes? That doesn't make sense to me, Rashika. Think about what you're saying there. I feel proud when I wear it because I had a few compliments from my friends. Okay, yeah, so you remember then that conversation piece, if you can still keep talking. Um, students, I want you to try this part two cue card. So talk about an object that you got from a vacation and you can volunteer for speaking. I will listen to your answer and then I will give you feedback. So go to the website, aehelp.com, create a student account, click on student partner speaking, Okay, uh, make sure to check that your microphone and speaker are working on the, uh, in your browser on the website. And then send me a message and say, hey, I want to volunteer. Message me, you'll see me as master, okay? So let's do this, everyone. Um, and um, you will have a chance to also ask me some questions. Remember that I said we'll do some Q&A in this class so we can, you can ask me questions about the IELTS, or studying abroad or immigration or even about grammar and I will do my best to give you clear answers okay so uh, go to the website uh, aehelp.com it's this website here okay uh, click on the green button to join for free C click on the red button to get all of our materials the premium package okay um, and then, uh, so if you click try demo, um, I'm already logged in. So then you go to your My Student account. Okay. And then in your My Student account, you have this uh, student partner speaking. It's right there, right above my head. Okay. You click on that student uh, partner speaking. And then you click I accept, start speaking. That just means that you accept that you will be... Uh, polite and you are responsible for what you say and then you get into this uh, interface here this um, uh, speaking interface and we have uh, Amu and Russia Duel and Anish in here right now um, and then you just send me a message and I can see that Amu one of our members um, and members this is for you first of all because it's a members chat class okay so yeah of course Amu you can try are you ready Okay, and I can see that Russia Duel is in here. Med Trap, I see you over there in the general aisles as well. 
good afternoon to you in Qatar. So go onto the website, go to your My Student account, click on Student Partner Speaking, and then uh, send me a message and we can connect and you can try this uh, part two. Okay, so Amu, if you're ready, you can give it a try. The trick here, build confidence. Don't worry about making mistakes. Don't worry about getting stuck. Don't worry about not making any sense. It doesn't matter. This is for practice. This is not your official IELTS, okay? So it's really useful. Hello? Hi, Amu. How are you? Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible. You're great. Yep, loud and clear. Yeah. How are you doing? I am doing pretty good. Thank you for asking. Yeah, it's a uh, thank you. Nice, fresh, crisp Saturday morning here in Victoria. Um, all right, uh, Amu. Yeah. Um, let's do this. So I'm going to read the cue card and then start you off. Okay, and just give me a nice. Um, uh, answer to the best of your ability I'll take some notes and then I'll give you some feedback okay yeah all right um, so talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation what is this object when and where did you get it where do you keep it in your house and why what memories and feelings does this object bring back from your vacation now Amu if you want you can talk about a baseball cap um, so you can use kind of the same idea or if you want you can come up with a completely different idea as well it's up to you so I will start you off here we go um, talk about an object that reminds you of uh, vacation your one minute preparation time is up uh, please begin speaking yeah a sovereign that restores many memories for me is my trip to Chennai along with my friends during the year 2020 is a last 70 centimeters tall and beautiful idol of Lord Radha Krishna, which I had bought at the end of my journey. The statue was made up of white marbles, beautifully painted with a combination of three different colors, red, yellow, and green. The beautiful Krishna idol has Radha towards his left and a flute in his hand, crossed legs, and decorated with the ornaments throughout the body. At, in fact, at the bottom of the deities, uh, sorry, at the bottom of the deities, there was a lotus pond beautifully decorated with the different flowers, which adds even more beauty to the statue. I had purchased this idol in the month of August on 22nd, just before the end of my journey um, from the famous Hare Krishna Sanctorium. Uh, actually, there are various forms of statues which were very attractive and the most delighted move of the sanatorium is that they, uh, they donate 25% of their income to the old age home which is located nearby their organization which made me to purchase this item. My mom always wished to have a statue placed in the northeast corner of the home as this uh, Radha Krishna idol brings lot of positive vibes to the home. Uh, in uh, Hindus, it is always considered that Radha Krishnas are the incarnations of Lord Vishnu and Goddess Lakshmi. Whenever I am facing any tough situations in my life, I just sit in front of the deities and do meditation for a few minutes. Fo followed okay. by as I'm going to stop you there. Your two minutes is up. And I will now yeah. ask you a question related to your response and some questions connected to this topic. Um, Amu, that was really yes. good. That was really, really good. I'm very, very impressed. Okay. Um, just a couple of small um critiques um, but overall that was really yeah. good so Amu I would say that that would be uh, 7.5 I would comfortably give you a 7.5 yeah. for that so it's between a good and a Thank very you. good for sure so when you know when we think about 7 to 8 uh, 7.5 that means between good and very good first of all yeah wonderful structure so you did a really good job of giving me lots of content and that's what students or candidates 
have to do for those ha high band scores is the uh, two minute response has to be content rich. So one of the most common mistakes in part two is that candidates just kind of repeat the same idea. Like they'll say, I got a statue of Krishna and I got the statue uh, four years ago. And when I bought the statue, I was really excited. And um, it reminds me of the time that I got this. And then they just kind of repeat and repeat. And there's not a lot of content. But in your case, it was really content rich because you stuck to strategy. So first of all, um, you told me that you got the statue, then you told me it's made of marble, it's painted. You did a really good job describing what it looks like, how big it is. You even gave me the dimensions, the size of it. You said, I think, 70 centimeters uh, tall. So that was really nice. You explained to me the, the position of the um, statue, of how the statue is sitting with the lotus pond, the colors, the material, the marble. So that was really great that I could picture this statue. Um, so that was good. And then you, you went on about yeah. where you keep it in the house. So you answered all the questions on the card. That was very smart as well. So that, those were all really good points. Um, the one part that was a little bit missing for me, um, where did you get the statue again? What was the place? I thought you said Shanghai. Uh, no, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Okay. Uh, I I'm not familiar with it, so even spelling it for me is yeah. Can you can you, can you spell it for me? C H E. Mm -hmm. N N. Mm -hmm. W N. A I. A I. Ten high. Ten I. Okay. Yeah. Chennai. Yeah. So anytime that you introduce a word, especially if it's a foreign word to the um, examiner, mm. really pronounce mm. it. So you want to really announce yeah. that word. So because they're going to be like me, they're going to be like, huh, what is this? What place is this? If they're not familiar with it. And then you want to repeat it. So you want to say my trip to oh. Tennai. And when I was in Tennai, um, I got this yeah. at a, a souvenir shop next to one of the temples and it helps to remind yeah. me of Tennai. So one part that I felt was a little bit missing is the memories that it brings back from your trip. So uh, you talked yes. about the statue, you talked about its symbolism, you talked about where you keep it in the house, but you didn't really talk too much about what the memory is that it reminds you of on your trip. So yes. it reminds me of this big, beautiful temple that I visited, um, which had similar kinds yeah. of statues, right? So that was the only missing part, yes. but overall it was really good. The other part, Amu, um, to improve is um, uh, your enunciation. So um, your speech was very rhythmic. Like it was like, it is made of marble painted with red uh, and green and blue and it is, has a lotus pond on it. And it's kind of like, duh, 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 almost kind of robotic. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So yes, um, that's not necessarily bad, but if you want to get an even higher score for that pronunciation, then you want to enunciate a little bit more like a da, do, 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 de, da, da, like a little bit more melodic up and down, emphasizing certain key words and points, and then it will be easier to understand as well. Do you know what I mean by this? Yeah, yes. Okay, so practice that. When you watch this video again, maybe this part in this lesson, um, then think, okay, that's a great answer. I'm gonna try this again, but with a little bit more rhythm, a little bit more melody. Um, native English is very yeah. melodic, so. Okay, Amu, um, so good job. Keep up the practice, beautiful structure. Like I say, I think that was a very solid answer. Uh, Abu, do you have any questions about IELTS speaking or about any other parts of the IELTS exam? Because I said to everyone that I'll give a chance for questions and answers as well. So do you have any questions that, that you have thought of while you've been studying that you're concerned about or that you want to know the answer to? Uh, right now, no. But initially I had, but I'm following your classes from the past four or five months. Oh, I think all of my doubts are clarified. Okay, good. I can tell. I, like when you answered this part too, it seems like you really have a clear idea of what you need to do. 
uh, for part two, which is great. Um, so good. Yeah. If questions do come up anytime, um, you can always just send me an email, yeah, email too. Okay, Amu? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Amu, thank you so much for uh, volunteering. I appreciate it. Have a lovely rest of your weekend. Thank you, sir. Happy weekend. Okay, bye-bye. All right, that was a moo. You can give a moo a thumbs up. That was really good. Uh, Mad Labs has Chennai with a CH, Chennai. Okay, thank you, Mad Lab, for making that clear. All right, Amrit, I can see that you're volunteering. Hi, Amrit, are you ready? Would you like to try this? Um, would you like to uh, try this cue card? All right. I can see that Amrita is ready. Here we go. Hi, Amrit. Hi, sir. How are you doing? I am doing great, sir. What about you? Pretty good, thanks. Any plans for the weekend? Mm, yes, I visit uh, a Golden Temple, which is quite a popular place in Mumbai City. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. um, Amrit, uh, let's do this. So um, I'll go back to the question, talking about an object that reminds you of a vacation. And we practiced uh, talking about a baseball cap from Hawaii. You can uh, kind of choose the same if you want, or you can go with something completely different like Amu just did with a marble statue from Chennai. Um, so up to you. If you have something real, like if you went on a trip in the last couple of months or in the last year and you have an object that you know would work great for this, you can always try that, okay? All right. Uh, so here we go, uh, Amrit. I'll start you off and then um, start right away, okay? So uh, talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation. Your one-minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. I got sunglasses on my trip to Golden Temple, which is quite popular place in Amritsar city, and it definitely helps me uh, to remember all of my good memories I had on that drop in trip. The size of the sunglasses is medium, which is uh, which was suitable for my face, and the color of the glasses is black. The cost of these glasses is around uh, one thousand million rupees. Uh, in fact, my sister bought it for me. Uh, uh, from the shops on the Golden Temple Street. The big reason about this class is because sun haunting my eyes a lot in sunny days. And then nowadays, whenever it is sunny out, I wear these glasses to protect my eyes. And even it was very useful for me uh, in in the summers. And uh, this sunglasses is not only special for me because of the memories that it bring back from the beautiful view of Golden Temple, but it also my sister's love and uh, it is uh, and so I can just grab it while uh, when I was uh, hurry to go outside and of course it stays in good conditions. Whenever I wear these sunglasses, I feel more relaxed and comfortable with the protecting from rays in a summer days. Okay, your two minutes is up. I'll stop you there. And uh, now I will ask you a question or two related to your response and some questions connected to the topic. All right, that was really good. Okay, that was good too. So uh, I'm really happy to hear that our members are uh, picking up um, and uh, implementing the uh, concepts of structure. So having good structure. Yes, sir. Okay? And that was yes, really sir. good. I... Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, I copy you know, some uh, like sentences. Yeah. And that's totally fine. So you went with sunglasses, which is kind of similar to a baseball cap. Sunglasses are great. It's a very common type of uh, souvenir that we buy on trips. Uh, when we're traveling, especially to sunny uh, vacation spots around the world. So I thought sunglasses was a great idea. Um, the statue was a great idea by Amu. The sunglasses are a great idea as well. Uh, reminds you of your trip to the Golden Temple. Um, it brings back lots of good memories. I would say that um, you would get about a 6.5 for that. Uh, okay, Amrit. Um, your fluency is great. Your fluency is like a band eight. Um, your pronunciation is about a band 
six to seven. Sometimes I have a little bit of a tough time understanding some words just because you're very crisp, like you're you're kind of rup, 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 and it's making it a little bit difficult for me. So um, try to smooth your pronunciation a bit. Try to soften the R sounds. Uh, your um, grammatical range is, I would say, seven, and your grammatical accuracy is five to six. You make some awkward grammar mistakes that are a little bit strange, um, and then your lexical resource is about a six to seven. So that's why you end up with that 6.5, uh, okay? Um, so what you want to do, Amrit, is you want to always record your responses and then listen to it and transcribe it, write it down and see where you're making grammar mistakes. Like where is it awkward? Um, okay, uh, so okay, sir. pay attention to those. If you listen back to this uh, response, you'll catch, okay, there's a couple of weird grammar mistakes there. Okay, but overall that was quite good. It's still very solid. So 6.5 is, is a good score. Amrit, do you have any questions about the IELTS exam or the speaking section for me? Yes, sir. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult to get some ideas and the speak, uh, speak continues within uh, two minutes. Okay, yeah. Um, so uh, I actually noticed that there was one spot where you got a little bit stuck in this two minutes as well. Uh, don't forget to look at the card, okay? So I think you answered it after, but um, as soon as you get stuck, as soon as you don't know what to say, look at the card because there was this question of where do you keep it in your house and why? Like where do you keep your sunglasses in your house and why? And I think you could have looked at that question and then stayed more fluent. So um, so make sure to pay attention to the cue card. Now, when you are thinking about ideas in the one minute, really keep it simple and um, try to remember the most common answers that people have. Like when people go traveling, what do they usually buy? They buy sunglasses, they buy baseball caps, they buy little statues, they buy keychains. What else do they buy? So what is what are some other objects that people often buy when they're traveling somewhere besides the ones I just like, mentioned? Like statues. Uh, mm -hmm. What else though? We already said statues, we already said baseball caps, sunglasses. Just think about it. Think about movies, think about your friends, your family or yourself when you go on a vacation. What else do you bring home in your suitcase or your backpack that didn't actually go like, with you? Uh, mm -hmm. Like religious objects, letter to religious. Even simpler. So this is this is I know, and this I'm right. This is what a lot of people have trouble with. They they just can't think. They can't think of the simple ideas, and then when you say it, they're like, "Oh, why didn't I think of that?" Like T-shirts, for example. Sometimes when I go travel somewhere, I'll like, buy a T-shirt. Right. Like watches. A, a watch. Yeah, a watch is a good one too. People will often buy a watch or a T-shirt on their trips. Absolutely. Okay. So practice simple thoughts. Um, okay, Amrit, uh, have an okay, awesome sir. rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for volunteering. I'll try to give one, uh, one more person a chance to connect here, okay? Okay, sir. Thank you so much for picking me. All right. Absolutely. Bye, bye, bye sir. Bye. All right. Give Amrit a thumbs up, everybody. That was really good. So talking about sunglasses was a great idea, uh, Amrit, by the way. Sunglasses was a great idea. Okay, um, so we've got uh, some more people in here now. We've got Russia Duel. Russia Duel has been trying to volunteer. So yes, you can. Are you ready, Russia Duel? Okay, some great volunteering, by the way. So Amu, Amrit, uh, really nice uh, responses. And, and I love the fluency. So I think both of you had not a lot of problems um, speaking for the two minutes on different kinds of information. Okay, Russia Duel. Hi, Russia Duel. Hello, sir. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm all right, sir. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. Where are you, Russia Duel? 
right now? I'm from Bangladesh. From Bangladesh. All right. Well, I hope you're having a good evening there. It's getting late for you. Uh, okay, Russia Duel, let's take a look at this uh, question. And then just like uh, Amu and Amrit did, um, give me a nice uh, full sentence answer. So I will start you off and then... Um, in the real IELTS, you definitely want to uh, start as quickly as possible after uh, the um, examiner tells you that your time is up. So here we go. Talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Well, I like to go on vacation from time to time. Uh, during the course of my life, I have been to many vacations. Uh, however, now I would like to talk about a vacation that I have been in my last winter vacation. Uh, during that time, I bought a painting, and now I'd like to talk about that. Uh, uh, at first, uh, I didn't have any plan to go there. Uh, I, I visited Cox's Bazaar. Uh, which is one of the most uh, famous tourist attraction there, and one of my friend visited there, and he suggested me the and he told me all the fascinating stories about the place, and I have to admit his stories really got me. And one day when we were walking uh, on the beach, I saw this uh, guy who was painting, and I have to admit his paintings were one of the hands down the best painting that I have ever seen till now but the one that caught my attention most was this picture with a man in his home and there was storm outside and everything was falling apart at first glance I couldn't understand uh, so I asked him and he explained it uh, that uh, the motive of this picture is uh, even even though everything is falling apart uh, the man is happy because real happiness relies within you. So okay. I was really inspired Your by two the... minute time is up. I will stop you there. And now we will continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you a question related to your response and some questions um, connected to this topic. Okay, that was good. That was good. Um, you made some classic mistakes, but that's fine. That's what I'm here to help you with. Um, Okay, um, here's some really important uh, information about the IELTS exam. So for the cue card, you have two minutes to speak, okay? And the examiner has to stop you at two minutes. In some very rare cases, if you're very fluent, they might allow you to speak a little bit more, like an extra 10, 15 seconds. Um, but uh, but they're quite strict on stopping you at the two minutes. Uh, that's because they also get supervised. So if I'm your IELTS examiner and I keep letting people talk for three minutes or four minutes for part two, um, then if my supervisor checks the recording, which they do, and they find that I've been letting um, uh, candidates speak for more than two minutes, they send me back to training and I lose money. So, so they don't let you speak for more than two minutes. I it's two minutes maximum. And because they only let you speak for two minutes, it's really important that you answer the questions on the card and you stay focused on the topic, okay? So your answer would get maybe a 5.5, maybe a six, but uh, they would probably give you a 5.5. Even though you're fluent and your fluency score would be good, um, you would get a low mark for your coherence because you're not answering the question directly enough, okay? Uh, so you're using some strategies that I've seen online, but they're not effective strategies. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that, okay? So here, you need to talk about an object that reminds you of a vacation, okay? And you talked yeah. about the painting. But from the two minutes, you only spent about 20 seconds talking about the painting. The other one minute, 40 seconds, a lot of time was wasted. Okay. Um, so you started by saying that, well, I like to go on vacations from time to time. 
this this question doesn't ask you about that so it doesn't ask you about when you like to go on vacations or how many vacations you go on it's asking you about an object that reminds you of one vacation okay so um, you have to start by uh, I bought a painting on a vacation two years ago when I visited this place you have to be a lot more direct does that make sense yes sir okay and then you said during the course of my life if you say that kind of a sentence in the real exam like during the course of my life I've been on many vacations the examiner will start thinking I'm gonna stop this guy at one minute because they're in their head now they're suddenly thinking this person isn't talking about the cue card they're just talking about filling space do you see what I mean uh, yes, sir. okay so don't use this strategy if somebody told you this strategy or if you saw somebody on the internet they're not telling you the truth they haven't sat the IELTS exam they haven't paid attention to how it works it doesn't work that way you have to answer the question directly okay so um, next time when you answer this question you want to say I got a painting while I was strolling on the beach sorry where was this vacation so I wasn't clear about that where... uh, it was Costas Bazaar Costas Bazaar and what's the location uh, I mean it's here in Bangladesh okay all right, so it's in Bangladesh. Okay, I'm not familiar with it, but anyway, that's what you want to clarify. So you want to clarify for me what it reminds you of this specific place, right? Um, and, um, and then you want to say that it reminds me of the culture, right? Because I guess that it kind of reminds you of the culture of that place and the people uh, that live there. Um, and that's what you want to focus on. Where do you keep this painting in your house? Uh, well, I hang it on the wall of my room. In your bedroom? Yes. Okay, now that was a question on the card, right? And the reason why you weren't able to answer that question is because you ran out of time, because you were talking about more general ideas instead of talking more specific ideas. So. If you don't do this next time, if you don't talk generally, if you talk more specifically and you focus on the card, you'll get a 6.5 instead of a 5.5. Okay? Uh, yes, sir. So just a very quick and easy way to improve your speaking section band score. Don't talk generally when you're talking about the cue card. Be specific about the cue card. Okay? Okay, sir. All right, but I commend you for your effort and for volunteering. Don't be shy or don't worry about you know making mistakes because so many students do what you just did. Like so many students say, well, there are lots of objects that I've got from many vacations. Like I've got keychains, shoes, baseball caps. But the object that I'd like to talk about today, and it's like, whoa, did you just really use 30 seconds to finally tell me the object that you want to talk about you can't do that you have to start with the object right so you have to say I got a baseball cap on my trip to Hawaii last year okay you just told me the object in the first 10 seconds great right so that's how you have to do it okay so I, I have to be more specific you, ha you absolutely so specific detailed answers get high band scores yes definitely okay, sir. okay? I, will, I, will, I will definitely keep in mind Awesome. Okay, Russia Duel, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend in Bangladesh. Thank you so much for uh, volunteering in this class. And in 30 minutes, we've got another class coming up. It's going to be speaking part three, where we're going to talk about this idea of souvenirs more and some more questions. So make sure you come back, okay? Yeah, thank you, sir, for your okay. advice. You're very welcome. Bye, Russia Duel. All right, that was Russia Duel. Everybody, give Russia Duel a thumbs up. Um, Amrit, you are very welcome. Thank you for your super chat donation. Uh, I can see that we've got uh, some more volunteers uh, in the class. Come back in 30 minutes, students. We'll have an all chat class where everybody will be able to tackle topics about souvenirs and objects from. Uh, vacation so um, don't forget what we did in this class because it will be useful for the next class okay uh, make sure to visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gielts help.com 
uh, for the general uh, IELTS on both of those websites. We've got lots of tools to help you improve. We just used one of those, the uh, speaking chat interface. Um, so uh, definitely, definitely use the websites every day. And I promise that you will uh, get better band scores when you do that. And you don't have to sit and pay another $300 for that very expensive IELTS exam as well. So uh, come back in 30 minutes. We'll do speaking part three together. We'll practice more. We'll learn more strategies. We'll learn more English. And we'll have a great time. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria momentarily. But I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.